didn't see it coming. A radar technician watches his screen clear skies. Pilots cruise at ease, unaware. No warning, no signal, not even a faint trace. And then seconds later, simulated destruction. Entire squadrons eliminated in training exercises by a single aircraft they never saw. That's not fiction. That's the reality of the F-22 Raptor. A jet so advanced it doesn't fight wars. It ends them before they start. Built in secret, feared in silence, and cloaked in mystery, the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor isn't just a machine. It's a ghost with claws, a predator that dominates the sky before the enemy even knows it's there. That's not fiction. That's the reality of the F-22 Raptor. A jet so advanced it doesn't fight wars. It ends them before they start. The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor wasn't just built to dominate the sky. It was built to be invisible in it, a ghost with claws, a machine that, even in peacetime, sends chills through the spines of generals who know what it can do. It's been called the most lethal fighter jet ever made. But what's more fascinating than its power are the reasons it vanished almost as quickly as it appeared. Let's start with the good, or rather the terrifying. Stealth, not camouflage, not avoidance. True stealth. The Raptor was designed with such obsessive precision that its radar cross-section is less than a bumblebee's. Think about that. A 62-foot-long, 43,000-pound war machine shows up on enemy radar as a bug, and not even a big one. That's no accident. The skin of the F-22 is coated with special radar-absorbing materials. Every panel, bolt, and edge is shaped to deflect radio waves in strange directions. Even the missiles are stored inside the body, because the moment anything hangs off the wing, the stealth is compromised. It doesn't just hide, it vanishes. Now combine that invisibility with super cruise. Most jets hit supersonic speed using afterburners, those blazing flames you see in action movies. They're fast, but they're loud, hot, and visible from miles away. The F-22, it cruises at Mach 1.8 without them. That means it can hunt you before you ever hear it coming. Then there's agility. Remember the kind of aerial ballet we saw in Top Gun? Multiply that by 10. With thrust vectoring nozzles that literally bend the direction of the engine's power, the F-22 can pivot, flip, spin, and climb at impossible angles. It can turn inside a radius that would cause most pilots to black out from G-forces. In a dogfight, it doesn't fly like a jet. It moves like a creature, and yet it might never even need to maneuver. Because by the time the enemy gets within visual range, the Raptor has probably already launched a missile. That's where the electronics come in. Inside the F-22 is a system so advanced, it fuses multiple streams of data radar, infrared, satellite, and electronic signals into one complete view. The pilot doesn't scan for threats. The jet tells them what's out there, what's dangerous, and what to hit first. It's flying with the mind of a machine, one that can process a battlefield in seconds. In simulated war games, F-22s have achieved kill ratios as high as 144 to zero, that's not a typo, 144 kills, zero losses. But for every bit of brilliance, there's a shadow. Let's talk cost. Each F-22 came with a price tag of around $150 million just to build. But factor in development, testing, upgrades, and maintenance, that number climbs to $350 million per plane. It was like owning a Lamborghini you couldn't park, clean, or fuel without a team of engineers. And the upkeep, painful. That sleek, stealthy coating that makes it invisible? Fragile. A single scratch could compromise its radar signature. Every flight hour required dozens of maintenance hours to keep the aircraft mission ready. It wasn't just high performance, it was high maintenance. Then came the law. Congress passed a bill banning any export of the F-22. That meant no allies, no foreign buyers, no offsetting the cost. Countries like Japan and Israel begged for a chance to buy it. The answer was always the same. No. Too risky. Too secret. The Raptor was America's weapon and America's alone. And that led to a deeper problem. The F-22 was designed for one mission winning the skies against advanced enemy air forces. But the wars America found itself in? Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria. Those weren't wars of dogfights. They were battles against insurgents with no air force at all. So the Raptor stayed home, protected, preserved, 
underused. The final blow? The F-35 Lightning II, a cheaper, more versatile stealth jet that could take off vertically, land on carriers, and be sold to allies around the globe. It didn't fly as fast or stealthy as the F-22, but it was good enough, and good enough was cheaper. By 2011, the F-22's production line was shut down. The specialized machines were dismantled. The future had moved on. Yet, not quite, because even now, more than two decades since its first flight, nothing quite compares to the Raptor. China's J-20, Russia's Su-57, impressive, yes, but experts still rank the F-22 above them all in pure combat capability. Pilots call it a cheat code. Enemies call it a ghost. And the sky still calls it king. So what happens now? There have been whispers of a revival, proposals to restart production, ideas to upgrade it with sixth-generation tech AI, lasers, drone control. But the truth is, the Raptor may be a masterpiece of a past era, a jet that was too perfect for the imperfect world it was built for. And yet, it still flies. You won't see it in formation. You won't hear about its missions. But if you ever find yourself under its shadow, chances are, it's already too late. Because the real legacy of the F-22 Raptor isn't just its speed or stealth or power. It's the fear it plants in every adversary who looks to the sky and wonders, is it up there right now? And that is the true genius of the Raptor. Not just being untouchable, but being unseen. A silent message written in vapor trails, reminding the world, we were here, we are watching, and we are ready. It was built to be untouchable, the ultimate guardian of the skies. But even the apex predator has its flaws cracks in the armor that no amount of stealth can hide. For all its brilliance, the F-22 Raptor came with a cost so steep it became its own worst enemy. Each jet carried a price tag in the hundreds of millions, and that was just to build it. Maintaining it? Even worse. It's said that the Raptor needed nearly 30 hours of maintenance for every single hour in the air. That's not a plane, it's a diva, a hangar queen a machine so delicate that its radar-absorbing skin could be compromised by something as small as a scratch or rain in the wrong weather. Then there's the secrecy. The F-22 was so advanced, so classified, that Congress refused to let it be exported. Not to allies, not to anyone. Japan wanted it, Israel wanted it, even Australia. All were denied, and while that protected U.S. military advantage, it killed the business model. No foreign buyers meant no shared cost. The Raptor became a lonely masterpiece, too expensive to mass produce, too elite to sustain. But perhaps its greatest flaw was timing. This ghost in the sky was built for wars that never came. Air dominance, dogfights, clashes with enemy superpowers, that was its game. But the wars America actually fought? Afghanistan, Iraq, Insurgents with no air force. Ground battles where stealth and supercruise meant nothing. So the F-22 stayed parked, pristine, underused, a sword in an age of sniper rifles and drones. And let's not forget the scandal of its oxygen system. For years, pilots reported blackouts, dizziness, and disorientation mid-flight. The very people trusted with the most advanced jet on Earth were struggling to breathe. Investigations followed. Fixes were issued, but the damage to reputation lingered like vapor trails in a clear blue sky. By the time the Pentagon looked at the bill, the workload, and the changing battlefield, the answer became clear. This wasn't sustainable. The production line was halted. The machines that built it were torn down. The Raptor, as powerful as it was, became a relic almost overnight. It wasn't the enemy that grounded the F-22. It was politics. Cost, irony, a plane too far ahead of its time, and maybe too perfect for a world that wasn't ready to use it. In the end, the F-22 Raptor didn't fail in the sky. It failed on the ground, killed not by missiles, but by money, timing, and the heavy weight of its own ambition.